guys. So on 41024 at 102 in the morning, I got um, this one. It's called Let There Be Light. And there was more to this one, but I was only um, allowed to share this section with you guys. Okay. Um, 102 in the Hebrew is a band or an army, um, which is opposed to the Greek, which is unable or peerless. Okay, so here we go. God Almighty, the creator of the universe, let there be light. There was light. It is no surprise that light will be used to begin the final battle. It is no surprise that all of mine that will glow will glow with light. It is no surprise the evil one hates light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. When you glow, you will be telling the darkness, let there be light. Or in other words, let there be Jesus Christ shown in me. Light always conquers death. Light conquered darkness. Light is truth. Light is purity. Light exposes what is hidden. My bright ones will bring forth truth and Christ and reveal the shadow games that the darkness plays. The exposure will bring many to me. They will no longer be trapped in the lies. Chains will break as each bright one performs boldly and brings light. Now this is specifically to me, but you could still glean from it, okay? Julie, you will be rebuilt as I remodel you. The squares of your DNA organize differently than the others. I will bring bold light through you. So bright, it will be beyond your belief. The season of miracles will unfold after this, and it will amaze and astonish many. Each bright one to follow you will also be unexplained and boldly challenge the darkness. This brief time before the war will be powerful. It will cause many prodigals to awaken. It will cause many faithful to awaken. It will scare the darkness. They are unprepared. Yes, the darkness may hear the words but nothing can prepare them for the scary pain that will occur when my light is boldly before them. They will retreat just long enough for the anointed to escape safely. Not one single bright one will have to pause to think if they will be used as a vessel. Something will occur before them and I will push them to use their faith. The result will be a miracle. My light will spread about. They will know you have done this by my power. But as they each spring into action, they will not know that others are doing it in various areas simultaneously. They will just be following my directives. Many of these events will be captured on cameras. It will be proof that more then one has my full power at their access. Some will be trying to exploit the truth. Some will try to make the truth be a lie. Some will have the fear of God. Some will reject me in reaction to the demons within. Opinions will fly. Those with me will know it's my power. They will know that God is alive and that with faith, all Christians have this power within them from God. My power at creation has to be made visible in these dark times to wake up the sleeping giant of the church. There are many who love me and carry my name, child of God or Christian, but they do not access the power available to them in fear. Man has told them this is sinful. What man would tell them that the power of God is sinful? Only ones pridefully against me who side with man. To believe man over me is thick pride. My words have never said my power was only available in certain biblical season. But this is what many believe. When these things occur, 
These that drop to their knees and repent and acknowledge that my power is alive and well and available to all who are mine, these will also gain my powers for miracles. But those who hold to man's traditions stubbornly will be found in shame when the bombs fall. Do not mourn the stubborn. Offer them my love and compassion. Ask them to repent. After seeing my miracles provided and protecting mine through unthinkable harms, if they still side with the traditions of man and stubbornly hold to pride, then they will stay for the great tribulation and be given one last chance within the darkness. If they do not drop their pride before the mark of the beast and side with the Antichrist, they will earn the consequences of the wicked. For only the wicked would knowingly side with the Antichrist. Most will turn after the rapture when the darkness falls, and the demons come to torture men on the earth. Most will finally cry out in humility, knowing they missed the rapture. Most of these also currently do not believe there will be a rapture. They mock those that believe in the rapture. When it occurs, they will know. They will cry. Their stubborn hearts will soften. They will pray in all sincerity for grace and forgiveness. I will forgive them. I will save their souls. But for their stubbornness, most will not survive the tribulation, but a trading of life on earth in a time of horrors. For the majesty of heaven and a new and eternal life will be welcomed. I will spare them pain in death and allow them to share the gospel with all around. This will not fuel the Antichrist power as he intends because a painless person heading toward heaven does not have fear but rejoicing. The Antichrist can only grow in his power fueled with fear from humans and human bloodshed. To deplete the number of humans available to the Antichrist to have their blood, I will take many all at once who are awaiting torture. The Antichrist will be in fury when their souls are simultaneously taken off the earth and appear here in heaven. This will cause him to look for others and eventually slaughter his own wicked ones. Wicked, <coughs> wicked slaying the wicked. Those will be ones whom he promised good lives because of the mark they have taken in solidarity and in worship of him. They will be rewarded instead with death. It will be a dark time. The Antichrist's reign will never manifest the way his false magicians have shown him. His witches who give him the ability to see the future do not have access to all of the future. It is limited what he can see. He will not see that special teams will come and take the evil off of the earth, off to the pit. His society will dwindle. He will still have men with him, but the numbers will be greatly diminished, not enough to live in the society he projects for the future. Great is the Lord God Almighty and greatly to be praised, for he is good and his goodness endures forever. He has grace on the stubborn and he brings justice to the wicked. Great is the Lord God Almighty. The Lord reigns. He is a living and mighty God with all authority. No shadow causes him to stumble. He is patient and strategic and is the conqueror. At the right time, Christ will come to the earth with his army and the great war of the end will occur. The Antichrist and the magician will be sent to the lake of fire and Satan to the pit. Then. The kings who they have left in their army will pridefully and uncontrollably fight, but the battle will be won justly and quickly, for no power can supersede the power of my son Jesus Christ. He has my full power, for he is deity. Mere men cannot stand versus deity. He will open his mouth and truth will come forth. The end will be conquered as the beginning of the world had started with words. Then the Lord said, let there be light, and it was light. 
Light will say words and they will immediately come to be. For when deity speaks, things occur. Rejoice. This day is not far off. The day approaches quickly. But legally, evil must reign for a short time. Then the courts of heaven will have fulfilled the examination of justice and give a report to the judge. The gavel will fall and the rule of the evil and wickedness will be taken off of the earth for 1,000 years. When it returns and rises up against my people, I will finish all evil forever, immediately. Have hope. When you see strange things, and as you are examples for me, the simple act of obedience by one person, and that will start a revolution of grace. The church will spring to life. People will be saved by the millions. Masses will come at once. Rejoice. The battle has already been won. The end has been seen. Be confident in your waiting for my deliverance. I am faithful. Do not be weary or discouraged. Do not allow your mood to fall. Stay in worship, which brings joy. Be joyful. Be confident. Stand firm. Anyway, so on 4-9, I got this dream that is coordinated with this that I was pushed today to put into this. I wasn't even intending on sharing this dream. But this morning, the Lord's like, you're sharing this dream. So here we go. <laughs> um... It was 12.15 to 12.30 at night. I had gone to bed at like 10, so I woke up from a dead sleep, and um, this was the dream. It was dark. Some dark figure was coming after me. There was something vague on people's phones that was related to this darkness and it was projecting out of their phones, but not in light, instead in darkness beaming out somehow. Many people were around me wherever I was. The dark figure was coming after me and he was large and I could not make out the details, just the basic outline of him, but he was all darkness. He was like the size of a two-story building. He aimed something at me like a huge thick beam of darkness. I'm not sure what it was being cast out from, but there was a spell involved and it was some sort of weapon that he was holding. The beam was like 24 to 30 inches wide and maybe like four to six inches thick. I saw it coming and I put my shield directly up in front of me and then the dark beam hit the shield I bent over backwards with my nose to the air from the force, but when the darkness was deflected off of the shield, it changed to be 100% pure bright light that went off behind me in a triangular shape very far away from me, so far I couldn't see, and the light built in strength. It was the same size as the shield, but it grew in breadth and height as it traveled far away. And it was as dense as the bright light that lit up everything around me, even the soldiers nearby. It revealed many were behind me when I saw this. Encircling me were soldiers. They were in the dark. They looked like they were wearing some sort of stormtrooper type helmet, but they were black and they were not as well defined. But in the light, it revealed that they were actually white helmets. The light hurt the dark figure terribly, and he retreated. At the same time this was occurring, I could feel people were called to pray, and their prayers were helping me. They didn't even know what I was doing. They were just called to pray. I was completely safe under my shield. Um, I sensed that Hector was next to me filming this event. Somehow I was associated with the number 15 and there was a 19 year old guy near me in the crowd to my left. The light was restored to the whole area after this event. Okay, so as far as my dream, obviously um, I'm going to come up against some darkness, right? And what is my shield? My shield is my faith. So as soon as I hit this situation with faith, boom, 
it just radically changes the darkness around me and turns everything to light. It brings light. It brings Jesus into the situation. And now Jesus' name and the miracles of God's power can be broadcast farther than I could see. Okay? And that's going to happen for multiple people, not just me. And I just think that's super fascinating because that is like, wow, right? Like we are going to be used in such a powerful way. Those of us that are going to be bright ones and bold ones. And those of us that are going to be obedient, faithful and getting miracles in our house. And it's going to be huge. So I want to encourage you that this is like, this is our opportunity. We've been in this generation that's just kind of like stalled out the church has been like tanking like crazy and this is our opportunity we're gonna flip the tables we're gonna be like guess what jesus is real guess what god's power trumps all y'all's power you could put whatever you want on whatever day you can like come up with all these crazy scenarios to try to convert people into your little dark pagan world but you know what it's not gonna work because we have God's power on our side. So I hope you find that encouraging, because I do. <laughs> okay, so Hector um, is someone that our family knows, and he's into like film, and um, he does like professional editing and stuff like that. Like, you know, I'm sure he's horrified by these videos, <laughs> to be honest. He's really good at what he does. But, um, he became a Christian recently, and I was given a lot of prophecy for him and about him, which is that he's going to be the younger generation's leader for the end times. And um, he will be uh, my Timothy. I'm training him. We're doing Bible studies and stuff like that. So after I woke up from this dream, I was told words from the Lord, which was tell Hector, Mary's dream, and he is the movie maker. And this movie goes viral. The darkness will present to the poor. And I will do a miracle. And it will shift the game. Hector records the end times miracles that happen in the beginning. Me and the other anointed. And then this video goes viral. Hector shares the gospel in the video. It's very simply put, just reading a few scriptures during the video, and because of this video, many are saved. Then I saw Hector and evil ones were running after him, and he was throwing Bible verses at them, like as if they were physical Bible verses, but he was throwing Bible verses at them, and he was perfectly safe. Um, then all of the people were running after him because they wanted to be saved, and because life was very hard after the war and he's the one who shared the gospel with all the people and they came to him because he was more he was younger he was in their understanding and all of us with gray hair we're not going to be as effective as the younger generation with who's left here okay so um, here's Mary's dream that was coordinated, okay, because I was supposed to tell Hector this dream. So she said, I saw a movie, it was more like real life. You would watch it and you were put inside of people to understand what they struggled with and why and how God delivered them. This was to help you so you could pray more effectively. So obviously this is when she is doing missions, right? I saw a morbidly obese woman and she had the trouble of gluttony and covetousness. And there was a man, I think of former drug use and another than me. I walked out of the movie. The movie has miracles of anointed helping people. And these were the three I was to work with. It wasn't like the other groups where there was only one always needy, but it was a healthy, supportive, and compassionate um, relationship. It wasn't like I was in charge. We were all there for each other, but we worked and we prayed for each other. Everyone who watched this movie ended up in a group. This movie was spreading like wildfire. Again, it was all about Jesus, God, as the focus and the center. It was to see, repent of sins, seek God first, 
It was very spiritually supportive. I think even my daughter watched this movie. We were almost home, a place where the video was catching on. There were two large multi-story buildings connected that formed a V-shape. They had dark red bricks, black and gray windows, six to seven stories high, maybe taller. I wanted to get my group and check on them and pray. A man walked up to me. He was an older fit man with gray hair. And he said the toilet was overflowing in the men's public bathroom, which is meaning that the people in the building need sanctification. So I had to go get a plunger and a toilet brush. I scaled the outside of the building because she's already in a different kind of body. She's transformed and on a mission. And there was something menacing about the building. So, so instead of going inside, I went up and down outside. It was very odd. I know I was being pursued and if they could catch me, they would, but I had no problems. It was kind of fun going up and down the building. It was fast like I was on an elevator, but it was me not in or on anything. I located a plunger and I, and they brought me into where the toilet was. A homeless man had used it and it was a single toilet in a large room, had a tiled floor, ceiling, walls, and the toilet was overflowing. The whole floor was flooded and full of filth. I was wearing rubber boots and the filthy water was probably higher than what I wore. I looked at it and I turned to the man next to me and I tossed in the plunger and said, nope, you deal with it. I'm here to help, but some messes you have to clean up yourself. So I left to go find my group. The obese woman had failed and she binge ate or something. And we all gathered with compassion, but firmness, no excuses. God had to be first. Also, it wasn't full of pity or castigation. This failing had happened. It was being dealt with and she didn't sink into depression. She just repented and leaned into God. It was actually really rather beautiful. Okay, so there's a mission going on and they're all watching this video. So in the video, we're seeing God's mighty power and then we're seeing, um, then we're seeing the, uh, gospel being shared. This goes viral. Okay. And then people are converting. So people like us that are anointed, we come back and we have different groups of people we're going to be working with to help them learn how to be sanctified. Okay. So I think that's pretty interesting, pretty cool connections. And, um, see you next time.